We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's amazing episode, we're going to be doing beauty benefits to digital dating in 2020. And to join us for this conversation, we have the amazing, the phenomenal Dennis Kenny. Ah, the crowd goes wild for him. Hi, Spicy. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you as well. Dan, I absolutely uh, love and worship you. You help me all the time um, with the spicy life and styling my clients. I have, of course, an amazing team behind me when it comes to um, the transformational process of making us um, look as good just uh, on the outside, as good as we look on the inside. Um, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> what do we? Yeah. I want to read your bio to everybody so they can just know how bomb.com you are. I'll take Dennis it. Kenny is a creative <laughs> director and fashion stylist, host and influencer. He is a graduate of the prestigious Carnegie Mellon University. Having earned a degree in drama, he has become a creative force in the world of fashion, having styled celebrities for the Emmys, SAG Awards, and numerous film premieres and commercials on both coasts. He has collaborated with several heavy-hitting brands, including Sean John, BCBG, Bed Bath & Beyond, Banana Republic, BB, Ugg, and Bonobos. Am I saying that right? Bonobos? Bonobos. Bonobos. Oh, see, this is why I have fashion people to help me with my clients. Okay? I got you. I got your back. <laughs> His style with Den interviews has also begun to resonate with fans, and he's interviewed and styled the likes of Christian Seriano, Mandy Gonzalez, Telly Lung. Leung. Leung. See? And Tony <laughs> Wing, actor James Monroe, Eagle Heart, to name a few. Yes. Racking up over 100K views and counting. Style with Dan has reached over 1 million accounts globally. In addition to his styling, he has also worked with Creative Director for 260 Sample Sale, creating content and campaigns nationally for over 50 select brands. And I remember you were the Creative Director for 260. Yes, I was for a couple of years there. We were doing campaigns in LA and that's how you and I really started to connect. Yeah, we were you were styling me. Amazing. Yeah, styling you out on the West Coast and then in New York, it is it is the biggest sample sale actually uh, chain in the country. So amazing. It's a huge thing. I found yeah. some good finds there. Yeah, Din was styling me in addition to, I would be like, okay, I have a client last minute needs to go on this date. Like what yeah. up? And I need them looking phenomenal. And he would definitely look out for your girl, Spicy. No, so. and I have to say that I am always <laughs> so, so humble to work with you. I mean, you oh. are just really leading the way, making matches, helping people find love. And I love working with you because it's always a seamless creative process. And you, you get it that it's different compartments of finding love in different yeah. categories. And I always love to sprinkle my little uh, beauty dust over everything. So I love this. <laughs> if anybody has the beauty secrets for digital dating in 2020, especially yeah. with everything being like in this new online space, you guys, it's going to be Den. And um, if you have learned anything from my podcast episodes and from listening to this show for The Spicy Life, it's that me and the guests always have this amazing vibe. And we always provide after Affirmations to one another. If you think about going on a date, starting off with compliments and affirming the person that you're with sets the tone for the date and for the time that you guys spend, gives them that acknowledgement, that affirmation that they are there for good reason and that you mm -hmm. want to be in their company and it gets the ball rolling for an even better date. So that's just like a spicy tip right there. You just saw us like love it on each that. other. Do that with your dates as well. So I have Din in the G spot right now and um, guest spotlight Din, you know how I am. Woo! I, <laughs> so but I gotta, I gotta warm you up and you have to first like, let us know before we get into today's episode. When did you first fall in love with yourself? When did you fall in love with Dennis Kenny, the man that you are? Oh my gosh. What a question. I, I love know. it. It certainly was a process. It was not something, you know, from day one, I just, you know, was 1000% confident in everything that I did. It really was a process for me coming to terms with myself, my sexuality, uh, just kind mm -hmm. of, um, you know, knowing that I deserved love and, and um, what I, I really wanted out of a partner. So it's just been, it, I'm continuing to evolve. Yeah. Even today, the advice that I, I give everyone, it is not coming from the, here we go, I, I know it all, but right. it's a, a, a nice combination of self-awareness and, uh, and just moving forward. But I think, you know, in my adult years, I was a little bit later to the dating game um, when I came out. So I mean, 19 or 20, I really just went out there and was, and was just trying to put my best foot forward. But 
I always had a strong sense of fashion and that mm-hmm. always was, even in times where I doubted myself, I felt like I had a nice external appearance going and sometimes you kind of fake it till you make it and then everything else falls into place. Yeah. So appearance really is an important part of this. So you were kind of like still building up the self-esteem and confidence part, yes. but you were like, you know what though? I'm going to make sure I look good. Like that's one thing yes. that I'm not going to be unconfident. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly. And you know, I was always, I was on stage, I was in front of people. So I felt like I was great in the social setting, but even just deep down, it's like, oh my gosh, am I, am I good enough? Am I, you always just, you, you doubt yourself when you're really just putting your foot out there for the first time. So it's been a process. I'd say my, you know, my early twenties, I started to kind of get a hold of it a little bit. Okay. And then, but now, I mean, we see you flourishing, you're styling for all kinds of TV shows and the morning show, uh, good morning, America. America. Yeah. Like that has to definitely be a confidence boost right there. Where like, can't nobody tell me nothing anymore. Are you, are you feeling like that? It's, I, you know, I, I am. And I think it's because of, of not just when I, I see a final picture or a moment that I've created and I say, look, you know, oh my God, I got this many likes or people love it or <laughs> blah, 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 and all that extra extraneous stuff. But it's my relationships with my clients. And mm. to, it's like, you know, there are a lot of great stylists out there, people that can put a good outfit, uh, yeah. construct a great outfit. But with me, I'd like to think that, and I've heard it's an experience, it's like we're building trust together Mm -hmm. it's a relationship yes with my client um and so they know if i'm going to say nope this isn't going to work or trust me you've got this yeah and when they step out there so i felt like particularly my work with gma i was uh helping transform some on-air talent that were just getting their foot in the door yeah and taking some risks because you gotta like take yourself outside of all these categories with styling in general here's a daytime look an evening look it's like no this is what i'm feeling look yeah um, so I, I, I am, I'm in the confidence making uh, business. Here. I love this. You, have, <laughs> you what in your life have had to conquer and take some risks, especially like you mean, yeah. like, uh, coming out and like having yep. to own that. And so even with mm-hmm. your sexuality, then with your looks and now, you know, you're yep. helping other people with defining how, you know, they want to present and making sure, you know, that it's in alignment with their authentic self, but then also maybe stepping outside of their comfort zone and what they've accustomed themselves to being safe, but now like oh. playing with different things. Cause you put me in some pieces before and I'm like, am I going to like this? And then of course, yep. like I put it on, and I'm like, well, you know what? I like it now. Like it, yes. you, you have to say yes sometimes. Because you're right, we get we get stuck. We think, okay, we this is what I'm comfortable in. This is what works for me. And it's like sometimes you need a fresh set of eyes to say, you know what, try it. Okay, you're trying the thing on. It's not yep. like life or death here. And um, <laughs> but you find out nine times nine times out of ten, if I'm telling you to try something on, it's for a reason. So yeah. uh, it can. I believe there is power in in clothing to, to help you from an emotional standpoint. I always say you can sometimes a great outfit can, can get you out of a, a bad day mm. the way it starts. Even just that process of getting ready. Yeah, it may not be, you know, everything changes and better in a moment, but it can be a little bit of a mood boost to put you on the right step for a better day. So I believe that in any category, that clothing, not necessarily about uh, trends or brands or how expensive something is, yeah. but rather just what it can bring out in you, whether it calms you down or spices you up. Hey, you know I love <laughs> I that. had to. I hey, had know, to. I love that. Hey, come for me. Yes, come for me. I love it. And you know, I'm going to like play this episode for my husband. Like, you know, Din said it helps with my mood, my self-esteem, babe. Yeah. I've been snapping lately because I need new outfits. <laughs> yeah, I need the dress. I need the dress. No. See, I got your back in more ways than one. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. You know, clothes are important. People think people that are focused on it sometimes are superficial when I completely disagree. I put that in the relevant term of self-care that we're Mm. all really, really focusing in on these days. Beautiful. And that it really is self-care. So, you know, okay, I read an article which was ignited this need for this episode, um, You've worked with me and like all of my team before. So I always highlight your guys' expertise when it comes to things that actually help spice up your life. And so I read a article recently that was saying like all of the great benefits with, you know, online dating and, you know, why we should be looking forward to 2020. And I agreed with a lot of these points and they're things that I actually like tell my clients all the time or I tell you guys on the podcast or on different shows that I go on, there are several benefits. I'm going to read seven of these benefits um, that Mm -hmm. I've come up with, but one of them 
is that I got from article and you have to guess which one I disagree with. Okay. Oh, so okay. you get to guess which one I disagree with, which is, it's going to be an easy, but okay. Got it. So these are the seven, uh, actually I came up with eight. Oh, I'm even better than I thought. I added more to this. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cause like in the middle of the night when I was like thinking of my benefits that I wanted to propose to you guys, certain stuff will come to me and I'm just like writing it down, writing it down to make mm -hmm. sure that I mention it. I go with, I go with the spirit. So, okay, Love number it. one, um, dating online has the benefit of weeding out people who aren't interested in you and you're not interested in them. Do you Absolutely. agree with that? Okay. Oh, I most certainly do. I know. I'm going to read you, I'm going to read the whole list to you and then you're going to tell me which one sticks out like a sore thumb. Okay. Okay. Um, physical intimacy is now moving slower when it comes to online dating. I see you nodding your head. Okay. Mm hmm Let's do the true and false. Um, okay. <laughs> I want you to tell me whether you think it's a true or the false. Got it. Okay. Definitely so physical, true. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, I know I keep changing the rules of my game that I'm playing with. Because I'm like, good. Dan, I need you. I just need to talk to you. No <laughs> need to worry about how you look. Not much effort needed when it comes to fragrance, makeup, or wardrobe when it comes to online dating. True or false? Ball Thank you. Capital I knew that that was going to be oh, sending out to you. I couldn't believe that this article published it. I think I got it from like the oh New York Times and I was like, wait, it said what? No. Um, and this was actually like speaking to the benefits of digital dating. We're going to circle back to that main one, which is why I brought you on today's episode. Okay. But tell me about for this one, true or false. All the money that you're saving from going out on dates, spending it on multiple people, um, you know, dating, you're saving a lot of money right now during the year 2020. True or false? Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess you could say true, but also paychecks aren't as strong. So it's oh, for some people. that's a good so point. A that's a good point. Tricky, we do have high unemployment. Say, that's I a good point. Yes, I mean dating in particular the is dating. Certainly, think of dating. I would say dating. Yes. Okay. Um, and we are we we yes. So I agree with that. We'll circle back to that one too. Um, yeah. And uh, it gives you an opportunity to learn common interests by online dating. Oh, absolutely true. Okay. Um, agreed. Uh, there builds an anticipation of actually meeting in person now, where before it was like swipe or it was like meet someone. Now we get to go like on a date. Now it's like this, nope, we're digital dating. We're having these Zoom dates or these FaceTime dates um, or using the apps because now it's built in sometimes when you can date in there and see the person. Um, but now it builds yeah. an anticipation to actually like physically connect and meet in person. I absolutely agree 100%. There have been some benefits to this uh, situation in terms of matchmaking and love. So I agree with that. Absolutely. Me too. Okay. Situationships are shelved now and people actually want love. True or false? Say the first part again. Situationships. So situationships are like friends with benefits where you're in a situation, mm. you're involved with someone, they're getting the benefits of a relationship, but they're, you're really just in a situationship. And you're saying that that is kind and of shelved. It is starting to be shelved, right? Because we yes. don't get, True. we're not um, just having the hookups anymore at such a high mm -hmm. rate. We're not taking advantage of being able to like see people. We don't know what they've got, what their family has, what they've been exposed to. Yes. And so we're moving Completely at a slower agree. pace. So there aren't these like, does, there's not the desire to um, also distract ourselves with situationships. People who are I now agree. by themselves are starting to say like, hmm, you know what? It's now or never. If I want love, like yes. I actually want real companionship. I'm not okay with this situationship situation anymore. <laughs> it, I, first of all, I love situationships. I, the first time I ever heard that, I think it's oh, brilliant. Okay. <laughs> and it's true. And it's true. People, we have, we've had all this time to really yeah. self-reflect about what we want. So I think that all that extra BS or that distraction um, is, is, is out the window right now. And that's a positive thing. Okay. Beautiful. Agreed. I put this down for a reason. And then mm -hmm. single parents now don't have um, as much excuses not to date because while they are multitasking and still like having to like maybe teach their kids and working from home, mm -hmm. they now have free time and they don't have to hire a sitter. They can just maybe like yes. put on the tunes, put on the tube and put their kid in the room. And now they can actually have a one-on-one -on -one date with someone versus like the whole process of having to like prepare, get a sitter, spend money and, and go the out. The money the thing is, is another thing that goes into the category of saving money yeah. in this current situation. But absolutely, it's taken that excuse right out the window. It's like, nope, you could just pop online and have a quick date, quick chat and you're good. So I okay. agree. 
Yay. Okay. So that was, that was, I wrote down these eight ones because I felt like um, these were eight various reasons that we should be looking on the positive side of benefits of dating in 2020. The one that yeah. hit me like a, an uppercut in my gut was ah. the one that I said, there's no need to worry about how you look in 2020 when it comes to the effort that's needed. When I read the article, um, there were several ones that I agree with. Like I said, several that I was kind of like, ah, but yeah. I chose which ones I was in alliance with, with, but then the one that I knew would stick out for a, you know, a sore thumb. Let's go through why <laughs> you actually mm. do still need to worry about how you look in 2020 when it comes to your appearance. And also from an energy standpoint, the process mm -hmm. of getting you know ready and feeling good about the date and how that shows up. So my first question to you, Den, is why does presentation even matter on a date? Why does it matter how we look? I mean, I think it's huge. First of all, all of the studies have shown, uh, uh, Princeton did a study. They said that you, the human being makes a, a, their first judgment about somebody within one-tenth of a second. Yep. It's literally a fraction of a second. We already, the computer's already going. We're already making that, that first impression. So you have, you, you have no choice. You're leading with your look, that first glance. <laughs> so why not give yourself a leg up already off, off the cuff right there? And it shows, and, and again, I was saying a little bit before about people get intimidated that they need to spend all this money. It needs mm -hmm. to be this crazy big production when in fact, just the simple details that we are mindful of and pay attention to can just put somebody at ease and really say, okay, they care. The yeah. fact that you, you're putting some effort on your end, showing up for me, putting your best foot forward. And again, we'll talk more about not overdoing it yeah. and kind of teetering on that fine line. But that's the first thing. Also what we discussed about what, how it makes you feel, you know, about, you, you know, okay, I'm, I'm looking good. I'm feeling good. And you're going to put that positive energy um, towards that person. So it's just, it speaks volumes. Yeah. You really give your the first opportunity to make that impression a strong one. Agreed. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I encourage all my clients, like, no, put effort in. I make them, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I make them actually like show me the look in advance. And because yeah. I'm not, um, the fashion expert, I can say like, oh, well, I think this looks cute. I will show them, you know, your guys, the photos to you guys and the images that I have, you know, them send me of the looks. And you will actually tell me like, no, actually, like she should be wearing like this waistline. Yes. Wearing like this, you know, piece with it. I mean, I don't speak in fashion lingo like mm -hmm. you, so it's mm -hmm. a, it's a, it's another language for you know for me. I speak in the language of love, um, yes. <laughs> but that's why we have you know someone to help with that, so that way we know. Okay, I am I am dead on with physically outwardly attracting what I am attracted to, right? Yes. Yes. And I and I do believe that presentation matters because it is how we are making the first judgment. And I did an episode a long time ago called, um, you know, why we judge a book by its cover. And this mm -hmm. is actually speaking to it. I just want to uh, reaffirm to the world that people still care about looks in 2020. Someone still wants yes. to be physically attracted to you. And it can be your definition of attraction, but don't tell me that if you were in person, you'd be making more of an effort than if you were meeting via FaceTime or Zoom, because you still have an opportunity to impress and you know, uh, you know, provide some allure to that person. Yes, personality Absolutely. is important, but the fact that you get to just stay home and like sit on your couch or an office, wherever you know you decide, we'll speak about great locations in a second. But like, yes. take this opportunity to still make sure that you look good because it also will affect the way that you feel and the confidence that you're giving in the, your appearance. Correct. Absolutely, one thousand percent. And even like the simple things, where of of you know paying attention to just ironing your clothes, just making <sighs> sure that that you're put together. Because I, I know to particularly iron. for men, <laughs> but right. But I mean particularly, and not even to make it a, a male and female thing. But I know you know a lot of straight men that I work with, they're like they they feel like if they're going to put so much into it, it's like either just they're not going to be you know masculine enough, or they just like mm. she's going to love me for me, blah blah blah. And I'm like. No, this is showing that you're already showing them a level of respect to going yeah. into the date by yep. taking care of yourself. It's not about your ego as much as it's actually 
you know, showing a, 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 just a lot of respect towards them. So I think it's so important to put it forward for, for so many reasons. Also, people say, well, I don't want someone just to judge me on my looks. Well, you don't have a choice. That's going to happen. <laughs> what, what kind of person you are, yeah, is, that's going to happen. or not. <laughs> yeah. And the, the look is going to, you know, is like your calling card and going to get you in. And then your personality and everything else is going to, you know, help you book the job and step through and, and take it to the next level. Then... What happens when someone doesn't put their best foot forward? Like when, um, if we were to send someone out on a date or a Zoom date and yeah. they show up in their sleeping clothes, because yes, that mm. has happened. I have set people up on a date and um, uh. one of the gentlemen is like, not much effort, you know, and she's over here filming like, well, dang, I made this effort to do my yep. hair. I did my, I beat my face even though I didn't want to because I didn't have to for my Zoom call at work, yep. but I still did it anyways. And he yep. doesn't meet her where she's at. How does that yep. affect the energy? It's already completely off. And again, it's like, she doesn't need to be in a ball gown. And he, you know, it's like, you yeah. just got to both, it just needs to be apparent without even saying it that you both, you know, this is you on your, your better, closer to your best day, you know, as far as just, the respect that you're showing to somebody. So Ooh, it's got to be equal. It's or it's already, Yeah, yep. I, I really do feel that way. It's like, you know what? I don't care if I'm going to go on a date with somebody as much as they don't have taste. And that's certainly the person. <laughs> but it's like, like, I could be like, go on a date with somebody and be like, okay, I don't like what they're wearing. But you know what? The clothes, they're clearly, it's either it was just dry cleaned, it's washed, his hair's combed. It's like, you know, it's cute. I can find my way in the relationship of, of, of how to, you know, we can work on that together. Mm. So I'm not going to be judgmental, like, oh, they don't know how to dress. But if it's just, you know, you really threw something on and you're just kind of blasé about it, that's a, that's a problem. You're so already starting from a deficit, in my for, opinion. But for those who don't know if they're looking blasé or not, right? Like, yeah. what if I am blasé right now and I don't know that I'm blasé? <laughs> that is very possible. I have been blasé before it. you guys. And my yep. husband has been like, take your butt back into <laughs> that closet and pick out something <laughs> like he didn't use the word blase but he definitely yeah. was like um yeah no that's not it because my husband actually has probably more fashion sense than i do but what if we don't know that we're blase and we think we're well doing give us some ideas for men and brill- it's a brilliant it's a brilliant question and whether you're working with spicy life or we're gonna have people we're gonna have our hands all over it but even just if you're listening now and in the future take that picture of yourself beforehand send it to a friend you know, ask yourself the question, you know, do you, would this, you know, how you'd want to present yourself? But I also will say, and I don't know if we'll get to, get to that in the future, is that I like to do a mock video call. Just to say, okay, I'm going to be back in the mm. video game. I know I'm going to, I'm back in the dating game and I'm going to be on video. It's like, do one day, you set up your lighting, you, or you set, you know, you, you do a little mock thing. You call up a friend and say, you know, what do you think? Does it, do I look all right? How's it, what do you, and you can kind of get some pointers there. So you've already you know, made yourself have the best presentation. But I say at the very least, take a snapshot, a selfie in the mirror, send it to a friend and be like, what do you think? I love that. That is an amazing spicy tip right there. Didn't just said Mm -hmm. have a mock date. And that is something that I will actually do with my, you know, clients is the like, let's discuss some of these topics and how you answer them. Like, are they appealing? And now you're saying like, let's even do it from like a physical standpoint because we're already assessing um, the moment you get on, whether we're physically yep. attracted, like, right. That's the first thing, but like you're saying, do it in advance with a friend to make sure yep. that like your lighting is straight, that your outfit looks yep. good. Like what is that person's impression? I think that's brilliant. I love that. A mock date with a friend. Yeah, exactly. And even if you feel uncomfortable saying, Oh my gosh, I don't want anybody to know that I'm dating and, and I want to be that, that formal, you know, when you're FaceTiming with a family member or a friend, you're testing out the lighting, just, just, just being mindful of that in the future of what works. For instance, when I knew I was going to chat with you today, I had my laptop in another room. I put it down. I was like, <laughs> mm. you know, it's like, I care about what, you know, if the, if the lighting's right and I'm good, but I, I'd like to think it didn't come on. And I'm, I'm like, you know, it's just it's an approachable feel, but put together feel is what we want. It needs to be re, uh, relaxed and at ease, but still attention to detail. Give me, and so I love this, um, Min, Jen mentioned like the lighting, make sure, you know, you mm-hmm. guys don't be afraid to invest in a ring light. I think that that is a phenomenal piece that has helped me even with Big having time. to 
uh, readjust to me recording the podcast. I was recording in studio and having guests in studio, knowing now that like I have to do Zoom calls and that I need good lighting, whether I'm recording like spicy tip videos or the spicy life episodes, lighting is important. Like let someone see you. And uh, look, if you can see right now, when I go like this, this is casting shadows all over me, yep. but you have the ring light and it actually ha helps brighten up your face so that they can actually see what they're signing up for. Cause that's what dating really is, is, Hmm, what am I signing up for? What am I about to invest in? And so give them a, give them a fair shot to see what they're signing up for. <laughs> Absolutely. And like in spicy, it was when we had a, a meeting a couple of weeks ago, just to, to reconnect. And that was the first thing I said, mm -hmm. I was like, I love just the presentation. <laughs> she, she's clearly killing the, the ring light game right now. You can get them for like literally attached them to your, a little clip you can put on your yep. computer, 30, 40 bucks. We're not talking about breaking the bank. Also on the flip side right now, if you look at me, I'm doing it off completely off of natural light. Oh my God. And you look it's amazing. Large, Thank you. I have a, a fairly large window in front of me, so make sure that the light is behind the yeah. computer, behind, and you're just going to get a nice glow. But of course, if I did this call a little later, I got the ring light in the back, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> then you stay ready so that you don't have to get ready. I love it. But what about our looks? Like, tell me pieces yeah. that I should be putting on. Give me female and male, because I think okay. that we let men get away with murder because they're men and mm -hmm. we don't expect them to be as stylish. Although all of us women, women, we want a stylish man. And so yeah. I think we give you guys a little bit more wiggle room. What can, mm -hmm. what are some looks that guys can be doing on camera showing up for a zoom call or a FaceTime date that makes them stand out? And we're like, Ooh, yes, honey. Like I can sign Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Oh, heck yeah. Well, I think a simple thing for guys that do not get overwhelmed if they're not super, you know, fashion, you know, fashion forward, um, people is just to switch out even like your basic t-shirt for a button down shirt. Mm. It's just a nice, a classic change. It just elevates the game a little bit. You know, nothing really loud in terms of patterns. I mean, even here I'm giving you a little pattern, but it's not something that I feel like is overpowering. And then, you know, if you're on a date and someone says, Oh, okay, well, what was that of? And then I have a little conversation piece here and it, you know, yeah, it just, I was just gonna say, what is that something all else. Yeah. You know, this one is like my little, I love my um, French, French bulldogs. I'm a pet lover. So it's something where I could, it could, you know, if it gets there and we're really hitting it off, but moving back to just a simple thing of changing out a t-shirt for a button down shirt, I think is really a, a nice thing you can do. I always say for a first date, we're talking here, stay away from the hoodies. I just feel like a first date, it's still a little bit too, like, I'm too cool and casual with you. Now, if we're moving forward, we're getting a, a higher comfort level, yeah. then you can bring that out if that's authentic to you. But I say the hoodies keep, um, keep away. Also, I just got to, like, throw this out here because I'm actually going to go against the grain of what all, pretty much all the other experts mm. are saying. Okay. Um, about even just interviews for work or whatnot with Zoom, I understand you have to be comfortable. Yeah. I get if you're on, you know, eight hours in a day, you want the bottom half that's most likely not on camera to be more comfortable. Yeah. But it still does not mean, I'm sorry, like the ripped whole pajama, different color, <laughs> just like a hot mess down below. Because you could have that moment in the day where, you know, you're, you're up or you got to go yeah. grab something. Um, and also, I feel that it still creates an energy. When I'm put together head to toe, I just hold myself differently. There you go. So I think that, you know, I think that's, and also, you know, I keep on going here, even with your, your undergarments. I know for women, we focus on that a lot about, and it's so important about, you know, your, your, uh, your, your bra, your everything yes. you wear, make sure that it's not like the one you, you wear all the time. Like when you're you know, <laughs> sitting around and you're, you know, eating out, you know, Ben and Jerry's, but something was a little like, you know, black, a little bit of lace that really ups the ante. Same for the guys, wear your best, your best under underwear, you know, your best boxer brief and ha and just really give your date that. So I think that combined with a dark denim or a real nice, um, more fitted uh, sweat pant, uh, I think can be really great. In addition to the grooming that I told you was so important. Yeah. Me. So what about like, um, can you wear a hat on a Zoom call? Can, what about, no, no hat. I, okay. I, I wouldn't for the, well, okay. Let me, I, I don't want to just make some general statement on it. It depends if that's part of, your thing, you wear them um, quite a bit of time and it's yeah. style. I think a baseball cap for a first date, again, is maybe a little too casual. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you have something a little bit more slick and you want to play with it and that's your thing, do it. I would say anything that's going to kind of cover you up is something I wouldn't want to encourage. We want to just be able to make eye contact. I know that 
uh, across all the boards, you want to see the gentleman's shoulders. There's something mm. uh, that, that puts you at ease when you get a little, little bit of that shape and that shape. See? <laughs> I think that that's um, something to be, to be mindful of, but <laughs> you don't want anything that's going to be covering up your face, I think. You want to be able to, at the very end of the day, make that connection face to face. And, and I think it's hard right now, though, because uh, like I'll be guilty of like my hairdresser is closed right now yeah. because of COVID. Yeah. And so I know the barbers are as well. If a guy can't get out to get groomed and, you know, shave or get that clean cut, what should he be doing? What, what's a tip that he can be doing so that he doesn't look crazy like a grizzly bear caveman on camera? Well, I mean, if he at this point, you know, and we're like, months into this has mm -hmm. not found some sort of an option, then we need to have a full intervention because it's like, <laughs> it's either, you got you got to at least, you know, trim up the sideburns. You can do that with your own clippers, uh, eyebrows. I mean, I could do a whole episode on just guys and just on the face. Mm. Um, you know, they think eyebrows, if I'm dealing with them, then it's, too, you know, it could be too effeminate or they're going to be too overarched. I'm not even saying to pluck, but, Particularly as you get older, you guys, your eyebrows, they continue to grow. Yeah. So you just get a little extension, just run it over it, a light little just trim. All of those details, you don't need to have a professional yeah. uh, barber there for. That's a great point because eyebrows yeah. grow, they get a little curly, they start to coil, and now that they're looking a little bit more grizzly. So you're not saying like yep. arch them, you're just saying trim no. your eyebrows the way you would your nope. nose hair and your ear hair if it was growing too long. Totally, yep, yeah. like straightforward, just if it's too long, you just you can just trim them there. Same if you have any facial hair, make sure that's in check. Um, the the you know, unibrow, little little pluck there, I mean just, the basics I'm talking about. Now, if you want to go really next level, you come talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll take you, then we'll take you there. Oh, please, Trust me. Please. <laughs> you have um, me cleaned up. Yeah, yes. Cleaned. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just every, and then nose hairs too. I mean, I can't tell you how many times you have a conversation with somebody and if it's like there, I, I know it sounds superficial, but we're dating here. We want to make sure that we feel that sexual energy that sparks is something yeah. you want to, you know, be with. So take the time. It's not, it's not time consuming. Just take those few minutes and, and look over. Well, you mentioned earlier that a lot of men may not take the time to groom because yep. they, uh, and I hear this from women as well. I want someone to just love me for me, right? Yes. Yes. The problem with the, I want someone to just love me for me is majority of us don't even show who we truly are from a personality standpoint and providing self-disclosure and transparency and vulnerability until the person makes us feel safe. So yeah. if you want someone to love you for you and there needs to be a process of intimacy built um, from an emotional standpoint, not sexual intimacy, but physical, I mean, um, emotional intimacy, not physical intimacy. There needs to be a process of emotional intimacy built the person still has to look at you during this yes. process of getting to know you yes. Or yes. That you before you can actually say that they love you for you before they actually know what they're signing up for to love. They need to be enticed, intrigued, indulged, yes. um, delighted to continue yes. getting to know you. And yes. while people don't want to have to do the additional work that they feel like may be, you know, burdensome in having to upkeep their physical appearance, you mentioned earlier, it is self-care. If how you feel is on the inside amazing, but on the outside, you're not reflecting that, we don't believe you. We do not yes. believe that you are absolutely in love with yourself because if you were, you would put in what, the additional work and maintenance just like you would you know, on a car when there's a scratch, you would buff it out. You know, like, yes, the inside still drives, but the outside still mm -hmm. shows like really the years and the age and how worn down it is. So, yes, yes. such <laughs> so a let, great analogy. Let I agree. Us see, you know, how you're feeling on the inside externally because we still have to look at you when we are dating. And sexual attraction is the number one request that I get. When they come in here, they're not talking, uh, starting off talking about how they want his heart, his spirit, his mind, his soul. Men, vice versa. It's, not, it's the exact same thing. They're not talking about how they want her, you know, her heart, her spirit, her soul. You guys are coming in mm -hmm. here to the spicy life saying, I want him to look like this, this, this. I want her to look yeah. like this, this, this. And I listen to you guys, but then I go into, okay, but let's talk about your core values. Let's talk about your deal breakers. Like mm -hmm. we go, the things that really, really do matter Long term, yes, but short term, to get you to that second, third, and fourth to date. To get there, 
what are we doing to continue the arousal going? It's one yes. thing. It's one thing to be an amazing person. It's another thing to also help and look amazing. I'm just saying, like, why can't we have both? And I'm just keeping it 100 with you guys because if I hear I one it. more time, I just want someone to love me for me. Well, guess what? We all do. Mm -hmm. I get my ass out of a lot of trouble with my husband because I keep my ish tight. I keep it right, yes. right? Because I'm a yes. brat. Like I'm not gonna lie. I, <laughs> he's got a lot to deal with, but it's easier to mm -hmm. deal with when I bat my little pretty eyes and my skin mm -hmm. is buttery soft, and he knows that I'm rubbing on him and he's rubbing on me while I'm asking, you know, or you know, t telling him whatever it is that I need. Like we still need to have sexual attraction for one another, and that comes with the self care that Din is speaking about. We have to get Absolutely. it out of our minds that it is this superficial element and actually embrace that some a bit, some form of vanity is okay when it yeah. comes to this dating process. Because the other thing that I get then is that if they don't care, take care of themselves now, they're not going to do it when we're uh, engaged. They're not going to do it when we're married. They're not going to do it when we have kids. And so why are we going to put fear in their heart right now? Let's show up and show out. I completely agree. And to piggyback on that, even when for the difference between the first date to the second and third, so many people just drop the ball. Oh. The first one, you follow all the tips. You're good. You go in, you have a nice connection. And the second or third, it's like out the window. Mm -hmm. it's maintaining that, this has to become a habit. It's a way of life, whether it's in love or any aspect of your life. You just got to bring that to the table. And you know what? There are so many, many good looking, beautiful model people that are really awful and yeah. that comes out over time so you know what lead don't give somebody a reason to walk away have that attraction going and then you back it up with everything that spice is telling you all of that that substance yep. there and what, what, what makes connections yep that's ex that is so freaking true can mm. we have some sex appeal and substance just a balance of both that's all that i'm asking for you from you guys in life <laughs> yeah and you know what it's it's not a, like i said a little vanity is okay it's not superficial you know, take pride in it. I Be gave, the best version of yourself. Yes. Thank you. The best version. Mm -hmm. You um, gave some amazing um, sprucing up looks for the fellas. Can you do the same for the yeah. ladies? Because I know they're listening right I now can. too. Like, well, what should I put on for this digital date? <laughs> what, what tops, what bottoms? You know, Dan, I always try to tell you, like, make my girls look sexy. But yeah. I know you have different variations of sexy, so go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I, no, and I, and I do. And so I think, well, first of all, we already covered the undergarments for both mm -hmm. women and men. I think that that is an important thing. Now, we're talking, starting specifically with first dates. You, there is a fine line between sexy, alluring, intriguing, mm -hmm. and trashy. Yeah. And, you know, it's like when people are dating and they're courting, particularly if they have good intentions of building a long-term companionship, they don't want to put you in that category of being too something, too, you know, the, the trashy, I think, is probably the best word to pick. So I, I'm all about being confident and showing your figure. Please, I am like the first one in line for that. However, it's so much more appealing and I think sexier to pick one one part of yourself to, mm -hmm. to show as opposed to showing everything in the kitchen sink. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, if you love your, your cleavage, if that's something that you're really you're proud of, show that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm all for that. <laughs> but, you know, exactly. And now maybe be going off the beaten path a little bit about a Zoom date, but just even in general dating, you know, like a leopard print booty can be just as hot as having like everything in the kitchen sink out to play, some, some leggings. So you can cover pieces and then choose specifically ones to show. So I think just if sexy is part of who you are, then absolutely I don't want to pull that back, but just make sure because that first impression, you don't want them to not really be listening to what you're saying and just yeah. focusing in on all of your attributes. I've heard you mention before, like the neckline or no, the, um, neckline, like the shoulders. shoulders. Yeah. That can be very, very, uh, you know, just sexy and appealing. And even the, the small of your back, uh, just this little little moments like that can be, or even a a, a dangly earring can mm. be suggestive and, and 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 flirty. Hair, like your hair right now, spicy, is doing oh, something always, for me. It is. <laughs> See, I love that. I mean, that's that to me is just as much as as having it all out there. So that I think the colors that you choose, make sure that it's something mm. vibrant and uplifting, something you feel good in. I think with prints, I'm all for it. Just make sure it's not too bold of a print is a huge yeah. thing. Also, particularly for the ladies, I feel like, and I love the effort because I've been, we've been spending all this time saying put the effort in, not to overdress that first 
that first date. I mean, it's like, you don't want to seem like you are this, you know, you want it still to be you. So finding that casual chic vibe. So I'd say just, just not overdressing is the key for that. But like, is a dress you know? okay? Would a dress be too much on a Zoom date? Do you feel like? Uh, I would say it's probably too much. Not, okay. I mean, if you, look, if you love a dress, and you're like, I feel amazing in this dress, yeah. wear the dress. Typically, though, my straightforward would be, you know, a really uh, a sexy blouse, I think, could be fun. I like that sexy blouse. You, you know, or like Plus, a... Plus, uh, ladies don't want to waste a dress on a Zoom date. I'm not going to lie. Like, I want to save that for when yep. you see me in person yes, <laughs> versus wasting exactly. my dress, and now I can't wear it in person. And you needed to see how I looks from the front and the back. <laughs> yeah, uh, ex exactly. Like, I love even you could do like a, a, a graphic tee and like kind of a fitted cute blazer like you just coming from work or coming from your from your office. You know, you know, it's just that that's kind of like a, a, a powerful vibe to it as yeah. well. Um, so there's a lot of options with that. I would just say, you know, the, keep the pencil skirts, like you said, for in person. Um, but then if you're still Zoom dating because of, you know, uh, what the limitations that we have physically and you're getting more comfortable down the line, you could set up a dinner date. Go for it. Have yep. the, you know, let me see what you're wearing. I mean, these are, these are not strict rules that you can never do. But if I'm talking in a broad stroke, a first date, it's like you want to come in casual, sexy, but not over the top. I would say nothing too heavily bedazzled. Yeah. You know, not no, like, whoa. No sparkles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe your, the earring can have a sparkle, a little, a little moment right here, but we just don't want it to be like, we're getting all of it at once. I like fitted tees. I like the blouse look that you're saying. Yeah. I like vibrant colors. I'm here for all of that. Um, I also would say too, because you mentioned undergarments, like for the energy yeah. of the sex appeal. I yeah. know what it does for me when I wear heels. I just feel like a more confident person. I'm a Love teeny it. little five four woman, um, but I lie and say I'm five five. So y'all know the truth now. <laughs> but like when I put my heels on, I yeah. feel elongated. I feel sexy. I feel feminine. So if Heels do that for you while you may be like, oh, but I don't want my feet to hurt. You're still going to be sitting down. It's not like you're going to be standing yeah. putting like all of your weight and pressure on your heels, but it does do something to us, right? Like it does make us Sweet feel change. sexy. So by all means, wear your heels on your Zoom date just so that you can have the energy of the mastery. Like, it, come on now. Uh, I mean, that is like killer. And that's exactly speaks to what we're saying. I mean, the difference between jogging pants and like fitting fitted leggings, mm -hmm. it just keeps everything, you know, elevated. And uh, I, I love that. I love that idea in, in heels. Obviously, we're not saying sit for eight hours a day in them, you know, but that for a date, it's bringing that to the table. So I love that idea. So I, I think with women is, is finding that, that that fine line. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I think um, you're, the tips that you even gave about like asking a friend or reaching out to us mm -hmm. if you need us. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, yeah, uh, yeah. that's always, that's, we're here for you. But like when it yeah. comes to even your setting right now, I like, of course, you know, the decor, you're an expert at this. So you're going to have the perfect setting. Um, mm -hmm. I'm using, you know, my um, sister Shelly, she is my creative director for the spicy life. So she's also an artist. Fun. So she has multiple different backdrops in the house for me to use to get in front of yes. when I'm content creating. What do you yes. recommend for people who may not uh, have your expertise or, you know, have a sister to mm -hmm. create these phenomenal artworks. What's a good yeah. background so that you look important, you look sexy, you know, yes. you already mentioned lighting, but like what's the aesthetics in the back? What's going on to, so that the person feels more enticed to go on date number two with you? I love this question. First of all, I will just say the, the place is not to do it. I know this seems so obvious, but you'd just be shocked. You don't want anything with a bat bathroom in the background. You don't want to be anywhere mm. near that. Nothing to do with that at all. The kitchen, I mean, look, you can see mine's kind of in the, in the background, but yeah. I think keeping, you know, the food and, and the bathroom stuff, just keeping that out. Um, in terms of the, the bedroom space, I'm not against it, um, but not in the bed. Mm. That can be further down the road. You know, you can, it can still maybe set the tone or a hint of, 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 you know, a romantic side to come, but I, I wouldn't be in the bed laying down. I think sitting up mm. straight and, and just bringing that energy forward is important. Something that sets the mood and a tone that, that really speaks to you. So I prefer that besides being behind just a blank wall. Yeah. Something, you know, I love plants 
plants are not expensive. Even having a, a little live plant in the corner just, oh, just brings a little, vi- a little vitality. I think it's not something we feel like, oh my God, I have to go get my whole place refurnished. <laughs> keep in mind, keep in mind, like you've done beautifully, Spicy, is like what you're wearing. Does it work with what's in the, in the background, in the setting? Is it, you know, you don't want it to be clashing. So right now I'm kind of giving you more of an earth tone vibe to it in a relaxed setting, which is one of the aesthetics that I love. So um, having a little bit of space, I, you don't want it to feel so interviewee. Like I said, blank wall, computers like mm. right here. I feel like where I'm cutting it right now, I think is pretty strong. So uh, it allows me to have some movement to be a little spontaneous in terms of showing, you know, from the waist up. But um, what, you're, what you're comfortable with and not to be overwhelmed. Also, be mindful of sounds. You don't want to be near the front door. Yeah. You know, if you have pets, try to have that under control. But if it's not, then you go with the flow. Um, but just to kind of have a setting, you know, if there's one room that has more traffic outside or a cab, you can hear to do that. So again, I think that test run through is going to solve a lot of those issues. Too. What about like pillows, throw blankets? Um, do we need like, cause now you have us thinking like we might need to go shopping at, you know, um, bed, bath and beyond. Yes. I mean, I love, <laughs> that was fun, beautiful. I, I love a fun flirty pillow. I have the, um, orange ones I just had sent to me. I'm changing out for the fall it's fun because you know I, I mean not going way off the beaten path here but your 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 decor can also set the tone in many ways like your clothing can for your mood particularly during these these this day and age you're in that house you better yeah. make that space your own and again you can do it on a budget but yeah a flirty pillow it's fun um you know your best chair your best it just uh, th- making sure that that room and also that like i feel like I have an open airy quality if you're looking at right now. Mm. So, and not as restricted. I think it's just the room becomes more breathable if you yeah. have a little bit of um, room. I always say that like that pop of color tells us what like emotion to feel, right? Mm. So when, when you're putting it on, it lets us know how you feel. But then when you have colors in your background or when you have, you know, colors in your area, it's also letting us know how like we should feel about you. And, you know, we are judging once again, a book by its cover, but we're also judging yes. you by your home too. The, we're, your we're home. The, book, the home the book lives in, the library. <laughs> we're judging you by well, the home. The spicy. I mean, like this in. literally is brilliant because we were talking in the beginning about all the benefits of data and this isn't to stress anybody out, but usually, you know, you're not always having somebody back that first date or two. If you do, hey, high five. But, <laughs> uh, but that is something that now these days we really have to think about. So it's even just, you know, a couple little moments in your room. You don't want it to be too busy and just the light, airy quality. And I love that with the color that it speaks to you. Like yeah. blue is one of my favorite colors. And obviously you are just given that fire red yes it has to be life right here but like i know that and you bring up a good point about like now we have to you know consider the home when it comes to our facetime Mm -hmm. and zoom dates this -hmm. should go without you know say but i have to say it anyways make sure your house is clean you know that dishes aren't out that the bowl of cereal you had in the morning isn't still there that your bed is made because sometimes we will ask for a tour of the house like oh let me see how you are living Because we're trying to see, do I want to sign up for this package? I'm sorry. I still can't even get over when I see a selfie on social media and the room is a hot mess. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, you could call me whatever you want, but it's like the bed's unkept, the deodorant stick, the this and the that. It's like, come on, like some basics here, people. But yes, amen to that on the date. Make sure the space is put together. Yeah, for sure. And I, 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 I feel bad you guys having to say this too, but look, sometimes I got to like remind yeah. you guys. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You got to hear it because people are continually making these, uh, their mistakes in my opinion. Now I'm going to ask you a tough one, Dan. Yeah. Do you feel like when you aren't aesthetically pleased with mm. your date and how the mm. person showed up that we have the right or an obligation even maybe to tell the person like, Hey, I don't feel like you kind of made any effort for this. I'm dressed up or maybe like, I'm just not physically attracted to you. How do you feel about that? Where, where, where I mean, is that line so that we can help them or our date for the next person? So we don't make the mistake or maybe we give them another chance. Like, Hey, I'm going to let you have one more chance at this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, that's a, that's a tough question. I think that if you feel that in every other category, you're vibing with them, mm-hmm. if it's a nice, person if the conversation's good they're paying attention to you you feel that there's some chemistry and that's something that's bothering you 
it can come out maybe over time and you can give that person a chance and find, you know, some fun, cute, suggestive ways to be like, oh, I'd love, I would love that color on you or this, if you're building up a relationship. Yeah. However, if it is somebody that you're like, they're not putting it together, I'm not feeling them. I don't think it's in our place to tell someone that we're not attracted to them or that they need to fix something up unless they ask you. Because I don't, you know, I feel like it's like, you just don't know where that person's coming from. They may just not know. So it really is a very specific question. But if you feel like everything else is kind of hitting it for me, I wish we could get it better. I think that there can be some cute flirty ways to up the ante in that department. But otherwise, if you know it's done, you know you're not going to talk to them again. <laughs> really, like you're really going to, you know, go do that to, you know, put somebody down in that way. I you are. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You can drink on, you can drink on our date. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are going to make me sound like an incredible asshole because you are being so polite and empathy um, or empathetic towards your date. I am under the notion that we should be giving each other constructive feedback in a kind way about our experience mm -hmm. with them because sometimes we may not have hit it off, but we don't understand why one of us has an impression that the date did went, you know, that the date get, did go well, and the other person is unclear, and we don't know why we got ghosted, or we mm -hmm. don't know why they don't want to go back out with us. And really, it was something as simple as like, "Why well, I don't feel like you, you know, took the time to cut your hair for me," or like some of us are yeah. really that particular when it comes to our presentation and judgmental. However, while I no, don't I think that we should be as hard on people or as critical, I do think that we should give people an opportunity. I'm a huge advocate of opportunities. Let me give you an opportunity to make me feel better about this thing. And me just completely like letting you go because of it. Uh, and because maybe the first impression wasn't that great. I'm a huge advocate of like, let me give them a couple chances. And I'm going to give them the chance by like telling them what I wasn't crazy about. Yep giving them an opportunity to now show me that maybe I was wrong and that maybe they didn't take it as seriously. Can they own up to that? Can they own up to like, you know what? You're right. I could have done better. Yeah. Or maybe the F you, I don't care what you say, but either way, I'm telling you why I'm not going back out on the second date or giving you an opportunity to tell me like, maybe you did just rush home from, you know, work or from, you know, maybe another location mm -hmm. and you didn't have time to put yourself together. Or when it comes from a, like, chemistry standpoint, maybe you are flustered about your grandmother who's sick in the hospital. And I don't know that. And yeah. you didn't like bring your best foot forward. And I don't want to go back out with you because of it. Maybe I give you an opportunity to share with me yeah. that granny's not doing well. And now I can really apply the empathy versus have the empathy and keeping the information from you. I'm here for the empathy and giving you the truth. It's a, it's a different spin on it. And I know it might sound kind of cool. no but it's transparency. No, I actually, I agree with you. And when my initial answering of the question is more, if I'm not feeling them mm -hmm. and I know it's just not going to happen. And if they don't ask me, I just feel like it's like, <laughs> you feel like uh, if the person you know, doesn't ask, like, it's then your business. Yeah, like if they, if like, it's not happening and then they like think everything's great. I mean, I don't know if it's my place to like call them up after if I know and be like, tell them what they did wrong, unless they want that <laughs> feedback. I'm now, if it's somebody, over. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's somebody where I was into someone and I'm genuinely baffled as to why it didn't progress, I love the idea of getting that feedback and that's going to help me. Or if they ask for the, for some feedback, I certainly would give it. I just yeah. think unsolicited advice. Mm -hmm particularly if I'm not interested, it's just a fine line there, but I totally agree. I mean, if dating is, you got to work at it. It's like yeah. not the easiest thing in the world. That's why people get worked up over it. So why go on being oblivious to something you are doing that you're not aware of, but simply answered it from the first time. If that person's not put together, I'm not feeling it. They're not giving me an excuse. I know we're not going to talk. See you later. Or if you want any <laughs> feedback, I'll give it to you. <laughs> it's like if we think of it like a job interview, right? You said you don't want it yeah. to feel stuffy like you're a job interview. That's why the airiness is so important. That's why like the space is so important. I agree yeah. with that. And just like when it comes to the, you know, corporate world or when it comes to the professional world, we want feedback on why we didn't get the job. Like we would 
love to know, you know, why something didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to dating, you know, I'm a huge proponent of like, we can do better. Like, let's figure out, let's get more, let's add to our self-awareness by being aware about something that we didn't know existed. And if someone else can share that in a polite way, I'm not saying like go in on someone yep. and tell them they look like trash. I'm saying actually say like, <laughs> dang, I, my feelings are kind of hurt. I put in a lot of effort and I feel like you didn't. What's up with this? Yeah. I'm saying more of like, from that standpoint. I mean, I've been on dates and told someone like, you know, unfortunately I am, extremely vibrant and your stories were incredibly boring. Can you spice it up? If you cannot, (laughs) this is not going to work. Yeah. So I'm, I I am a huge advocate of feedback, but you have to be willing to, to put it out there. What I want you to put out there. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. It's all in the delivery and it's no, and they're great. It's just, it's all in the delivery. You know, that's, that's, uh, that's how it is. It's how you approach it and how you tell somebody because you just want to be kind. You don't want, you know, Someone See, Dan is, a, is already amazing. vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> Dan is an amazing human. He's like, make everybody feel good. Make the world real good. That's why he cares so much about what he does and helping with appearance is because he does have this gift of like, I want you to feel good at the end of the day. And what look, what presentation is going to make you feel your best. And that is honestly like what the approach that we take when it comes to my clients. I'm like, Put her in, you know, something that's going to make her look like, you know, a, a hot tamale. And you're like, well, mm-hmm. let's start with putting her in something yep. that she feels comfortable with, but that also pushes just a little bit versus yep. like my extreme butt that is like, let's take her from zero to 100 real quick. So and yes, you keep us in pace. That's why we're a great team. That's why we're a great team. <laughs> he, he keeps me in check. Yeah, he keeps me in check. I, pre- I appreciate you, Dan. <laughs> I appreciate you. I, I, I love it to death. Um, you have to let everybody know though, like where they can find you, where they can get um, everything that you have to offer. If they want to just reach out directly to you and maybe ask about certain looks or work with you, how can they find all of your platform? Tell us everything to go to. Awesome. Well, basically on all social media, you can find me at style with den. Uh, That's on Instagram. I'm I'm heavily active. I'm also on Twitter there. And then, or you can go to my website, www.stylewithden.com and do the submission that way. So I work with, Every day, people that are trying to connect, find love, or just to find, you know, to look their best version of themselves to uh, red carpet, we go all the way. So I always will lead with a kind foot and just to really bring out that finishing touch to make you feel and look your best. Yes, you guys. Din is uh, sweet and I am spicy. So you know what you're getting when you sign up for the spicy life. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh, I, got the, I got those people, the sweet, I got the sweet tooth here for you guys who, uh, who want the sweet tooth. <laughs> but I love how you work well with both, you know, men and women and sprucing it up and just bringing it to the next level. You're so educated in that um, and just extremely dynamic in what you do and your purpose. So thank you so much, Dan, for everything thank that you, you do Patrick, for the yeah. world and for the spicy life. Um, you guys can definitely play with my Twitter, stroke my Instagram at spicy Mati, go to the spicy life.com, <laughs> click and subscribe, share this episode with a friend who may not be, uh, able to get that second date with her zoom date or her FaceTime date. May that she or he may need to hear this so that they can, you know, raise a few bars up, raise it up a notch and mm-hmm. get that date. But as always, you guys have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.